So good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the HIALI Business Steps Up. And you know, this is a uh, monthly, a bi-monthly program where we really interview business leaders and talk about not only the challenges that are going on on Long Island, but some of the very active solutions that they're coming up with. And this month, no surprise, before I introduce our guests, I, I wanna congratulate everybody again. We know it's been a very rough two years yeah, and um, you know, we were just talking before about you know owning a business and running a business. Certainly not for the faint of heart. And we've seen through this pandemic that people have worked harder than they've ever worked before. All of us and all of you. And uh, we want to just communicate that the HIALI continues to be with you through this and give you any resource that you need, really, to uh, help your company get back and help your company thrive. And it is. One of the things that caused us to create this business steps up series, we began to see some of the magnificent things all of you were doing in terms of repurposing your plan for PPE and um, just doing some magnificent, magnificent things for the business community. So this afternoon, we have Mr. Ron Loveland. He is the president of Summit Security and Efficiency Solutions and Kevin Kevin, I know I'm going to mess it up, Kevin. <laughs> the Vichy, you tell you got me. It. That's perfectly fine. Thank okay. you. Managing Thanks for director having me. at, at uh, Bimzer International Corporation. And not only are they both successful leaders on Long Island, but we are very honored to have them as HIALI Manufacturing and International Trade Committee co chairs. So that is a very robust committee. We have a lot of committees, but particularly this one is very robust and they really offer a lot for the manufacturers and dis uh, distributors all over Long Island. So why don't we start there? I'm gonna ask you both to introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about how you're involved in manufacturing and what your backgrounds are. Ron, you wanna go first? Sure, so uh, my name's Ron Loveland, president of Summit Safety and Efficiency Solutions. Um, Really, manufacturing is in my blood. You know, after my Army days, I uh, spent a dozen years at Sikorsky Aircraft. Uh, so that's the helicopter guys across the, the Sound over in Connecticut. And, uh, you know, a lot of the manufacturers here in the aerospace business are still supporting Sikorsky, as well as Boeing and Lockheed and the other companies as well. So, uh, you know, it's always been something that's dear to my heart. Uh, love to, uh, to work with manufacturers and help them thrive. And you know, the, the big challenges they're having right now are uh, labor, supply chain, and inflation. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that and how we're trying to, uh, to use the HIA trade show this year to, uh, to help them out with those uh, issues. Great, thanks. How about you, Kevin? Well, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Such an honor. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Kevin Deveji, and I'm the Managing Director of Bintree International. So, um, in essence, we are a company for um, global uh, enterprise software publishing. So we always work with manufacturing companies. Uh, it's actually our involvement with manufacturing. We help companies uh, automate and digitize business, uh, business processes and uh, manufacturing processes. For me, I also have a manufacturing background. I also work in various um, manufacturing industries, um, pulp paper, packaging, um, uh, textile, uh, natural stone are some of them. So I have also lived through many, uh, I've seen and witnessed many different different challenges uh, for the manufacturing. And um, happy to be here. And let's talk about how we can, uh, you know, address the uh, challenges of um, manufacturers in, in, the, in the region. Yeah, great. And thank you. So, you know, um, it's funny, we, we've talked about this offline before. I don't know about the both of you, but when I grew up, everybody worked for Grumman, right? Mm -hmm. And um, just everybody on the block worked for Grumman. And when some of that at least went away, the, the perception was that manufacturing is dead. And that's one of the things, that, places I think we need to start in this conversation is to really reassure people manufacturing is not dead. It is alive and well with over 3,000 manufacturers and manufacturing is still the third largest in payroll mm -hmm. on Long Island, right? So talk a little bit about that, what you're both seeing in the manufacturing world and why you feel it's not dead, why you know it's not dead. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's a really good comment. Um, you know, you talk to the average person on the street in Long Island, they're saying, yeah, you know, manufacturing's gone. There's no manufacturing here. Grumman left years ago. 
can't be anything farther from the truth. You know, anybody who takes a drive through the, uh, the industrial park uh, here in Hop Hog will see, you know, signs popping up all over the place with uh, biopharma, nutraceutical, medical device. Uh, and there's still a, a fair amount of uh, aerospace business here as well. So um, I think one of the issues that manufacturing has on Long Island, especially with parents, teachers, and students, is we have a, a public relations problem. You know, people just don't know that there's, there's great high paying uh, jobs here in manufacturing, exciting jobs, you know. Uh, manufacturers are making uh, aerospace parts, you know, to go up into space or to fly jet engines. Uh, they're, they're making uh, COVID uh, um, vaccines and test kits and, uh, you know, PPE, like you said. So a lot of great things going on here, exciting things. And I think it's, uh, we just got to get the word out. And that's, that's one of the things that we're, we're focused on for the, uh, uh, for the manufacturing pavilion at the trade show this year is to get more and more students introduced to that. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, what are you, what are you both seeing in terms of manufacturing? Um, what did you see pre-COVID and what are you seeing post-COVID? Have, have you seen a difference? Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, so before COVID, it was actually a different uh, mindset in a way that, you know, serving customers, managing the uh, supply chain, for example, and, uh, and the labor, for instance. So uh, obviously COVID-19 changed everything in terms of doing business, in terms of the focus, in terms of markets, and as well as addressing challenges. So we just, for example, um, you know, talk about top five challenges of manufacturers, for example, just like Ram mentioned you know, supply and chain disruption is here. It's a, it's, it wasn't this, this challenging before, that's a fact. So now it's more challenging than before. So manufacturers try to address this, for example, labor shortages, another challenge. Um, we had it before, but right now this is a different challenge in a way that, you know, we need to find and we need to keep them. So there was, for example, an, an article in Wall, Wall Street Journal, for example. So when you hire somebody, they ask and they had a survey you know, employees planning to stay up to two years in a company. It's a pretty, sh pretty short time. Uh, so we have to extend this. That's also a national problem in a day. So what we feel in Long Island region, in New York region is also national problem in a way that we all have to address. Uh, another one, for example, is the technology. So there is remote work. Uh, it became remote work first due to COVID. Now right. there is hybrid work that we have to address altogether. So it requires uh, technologies. It requires also uh, adapting the change. It's also a change management in a way, the way that we do business. So we are not always on site anymore as manufacturers. We don't always see customers face to face like before. So uh, we see that manufacturers are addressing these challenges in different ways as much as they can. And uh, just like uh, you know, Ram mentioned earlier, um, some of them, they are making settings, different settings in their manufacturing environment. Some of them, they try to find different markets, for example. So there is creativity and that is a fact. So that is exciting. And uh, that is also, you know, good for manufacturing in a way that, you know, manufacturers are trying to survive and adapt the change, which is good. Um, and also as addressed earlier, so HALI uh, trade show will be a great opportunity to uh, you know, address and discuss these challenges that we have during COVID, after COVID and how we can do further nowadays, um, as well as, uh, of course, we need to uh, also discuss about other resources that's available, um, especially finding new markets. For example, uh, we had a, a meeting last week, uh, a couple of weeks ago at our committee about finding new international markets, what type of uh, tools and resources are available that we have to also you know, learn about and then use as manufacturers, for instance. So in that sense, that's exciting. Manufacturing in Long Island, it is live. I 100% agree with Ron, it's here to stay. And in my opinion, it is the soul of our economy. And so that's critical, that's critical. So there is no such thing in my view that, you know, uh, manufacturing is gone, that's here to stay, that is important, we, that's uh, dear to our heart. We have to keep it, we have to uh, further it in global marketplace. And we have yeah. to work harder all together. In that sense, HLA is a great community to um, you know, use the resources, learn about resources and utilizing them. Yeah, and listen, thank you both for leading it. I mean, you know, uh, it's interesting. So several things you said, one is it's definitely an employee's market, right? So when we look at filling a talent pool, 
just the dynamic is so different than it's ever been before. Um, number one. Number two is, you know, when we, we go home, I have a 15 year old son. And when I talk to him about the work we do and the careers that are out there, my dialogue has changed based on what the both of you seriously have educated me in and us in and our manufacturers are telling me, which is, you know, it is absolutely not, as Ron said before, it is not, um, the perception is off. So what happens is a lot of people think it's a dirty machinist type of business. And we forget two things. Number one is, number one, it's not necessarily a dirty machinist type of business. And number two, that business needs accountants and that business needs other people and other skill sets to be able to run manufacturing companies. So, um, you know, we know that if you took those 5 million, right, Americans that were displaced several years ago in manufacturing and put them back in to manufacturing, they would not have the skill set that they need today because we're talking about very advanced manufacturing. So the trade show, let's get to the trade show just for a second. So, um, you know, it was really your brainchild, quite frankly, not the show itself, but coming to us and saying, how do we highlight manufacturers and it came at a great time because as you know, we did a sustainability study in this Long Island Innovation Park and it told us that 58% of the company's industries were from tradable sectors. And that means, as you know, companies that are bringing monies in from outside of Long Island into Long Island for our economy. So it just made perfect sense. So talk to us about the excitement of this manufacturing pavilion. I, I know we have a bunch of people, the yep. types of companies that are involved, we have a bunch of people involved. We can't thank you enough. We're very excited about it. So talk to us about that. What are you excited for that, that we will see that day, do you think? Well, I think um, any successful organization is always tuned into their marketplace, right? And, uh, you know, if you're, if you're taking care of the needs of the your consumer out there or your potential members or constituents, you're going to be successful. So, you know, here we are in this, uh, the great, uh, what are they called? The great reorganization or the, um, uh, resignation, you know, yes. resignation. the great resignation, right. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, what do we do to help these people? Cause every manufacturer I talk to says, I can't find people, right. man. If I could find six machinists, I would hire them on the spot. If I could find, um, you know, you know, we've got uh, companies like uh, Water Lilies Food over in Bayshore are looking to hire 400 people. Kembaya wants to hire uh, 100 people. Um, you know, they're creating, you know, talk about COVID a little bit. They're creating a PCR test kit. And right now it takes, what, uh, two or three days to get the results. They created a test kit that can get the results in 15 minutes. So, I mean, once they get the, uh, the FDA uh, approval, they're going to just rock it and uh, they're, they're going to need help right away. But all these companies are just starving for, um, for people. So, you know, you think about, okay, where are they going to find people? I had a conversation with uh, Ron Tabitis, who's the vice president of supply chain management over at Telefonics. And he said, we don't have a, a labor problem because 10 years ago, we decided, hey, we got to get into the pipeline. We got to get down to the schools. We got to start developing that interest in manufacturing. And in our company, you know, we make cool electronics, uh, navcom uh, systems for you know helicopters and and uh, an aircraft. And you know, we're exciting those uh, future students about us and letting them know about it because you know the, the typical student, um, you know, maybe the maybe the college level kids are taken care of and the, the folks at the, you know, special needs area, but the kids in between, you know, they, they get lost in the sauce. I know I had that same experience with our kids uh, in three village when they went toward Melville. Um, so, you know, this is a chance during this trade show to introduce students to high paying, exciting careers in manufacturing. So I, I think, you know, what we try to do is meet the need of the community, which is, Hey, we need people. Right, right. And you know, that's the key. The key is the connection, right? I mean, that's certainly what you two do well. And certainly what we are, our core mission is here at the HIALI is we have the resources, we have the kids, assuming they stay on, on yeah, yeah. right? We have the some great companies, mm -hmm. it's the ability to be able to connect them. So that's, that's true. 
Yeah. So I, if I may also add, um, so for the trade show also, another thing is, uh, in addition to what um, uh, Ron addressed, another thing is uh, technology. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is no manufacturing without the right technology. And uh, we also have the opportunity to have uh, uh, manufacturing technology organizations in, in, the, in, the, in the trade show. In addition, we'll also have the uh, uh, technology for business committee with us. So we are joining forces, uh, manufacturing and technology there, you know, hand to hand, we cannot, you know, think of them separately. So that uh, trade show is also important to learn about what type of new technologies are there, what type of best practices are there, and how we can learn from them. And, uh, you know, if we can use these ideas, we need to be creative for to be competitive. So that is a great opportunity for manufacturers to see and learn about new manufacturing technologies, and also talk about other manufacturers who are actually implementing those technologies. So that's a great medium place for all the manufacturers to see and learn about the technology, manufacturing technology, as well as digital transformation, which is another important subject that we need to address. So in that sense, I'm very excited to meet with manufacturers and I definitely welcome them. Yeah. And invite them to in, the trade show, definitely. In addition to that, Kevin, is, you know, how do you excite students to come to a show like this to check things out? Kids are excited about technology, right? They're excited about True. robots and cobots and automation. Drones, and right? Yes. Video games, yes. drones, yeah, you name it. So, True. you know, there's, there's kind of a, a double-edged approach to that. One is, you know, show manufacturers how they can overcome their labor shortage by automating, right? But also attract the students and parents and teachers to say, hey, there's some cool stuff going on here that we can, we can show off to the kids and attract them to the show as well. Yeah. And in fact, just this morning, we, we were talking about, I saw Rosalie Drago, who, yeah. as many of us know, and I know we do a lot of work, she's wonderful, uh, the county uh, commissioner of the Department of uh, Labor, um, talking about busing these kids into the show, right? And yeah. because it's at South Community College, um, really encouraging those kids to come to the show. So again, it's what we said before, it's all about making the connection. That's a piece of the trade show. I mean, the other thing you will both be doing that we're very excited about is you'll be doing some educational programs for us, right? At the show, and that's the conference piece of the show. So what we found over the last 34 years with the show is that absolutely some of it is walking the show floor and seeing and touching things and seeing what's going on. But the other piece of it is educating people. So talk to us a little bit about the breakout session. What do you think you, we'll see when we come? Yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited about some of the things going on where we're getting that school to manufacturers connection. Uh, Longwood High School, for instance, has a classroom to careers program where they, I, I think it's just a super idea that all the schools should be doing. You get the kids as freshmen, right? And you say, okay, let's think about what you're good at, what you wanna do you know, what your career aspirations are, and then start tracking those kids to potential um, uh, exposure, you know, introduction to, to some of these careers. Maybe they're going to do shadowing, but uh, Longwood has done a great job, and East West Industries, one of our constituents here, uh, has hired high school interns who turned into full-time employees, uh, which is, you know, just a great uh, process. Uh, West Islip High School has gotten together with CPI Aero and they set up a machine shop within their organization. I don't know about the rest of you, but when I was a kid, you know, they had wood shop, they had machine shop, auto shop. Nowadays, you can't find it anywhere. So it's great to see, you know, where the pendulum swinging back the other way. Um, Orlikon Metco over in Westbury, they're a, uh, a, a international conglomerate division. Uh, they have 300 plus employees. Um, they're going to be working with NASA BOCES to be able to develop a machining um, curriculum or manufacturing curriculum. So these students that come out will have the, the basic skills. You know, they're going to be able to do fractions and do trigonometry and do geometry and all the things that you need to be able to, you know, machine parts in a, a machining company. So some, some really super exciting things going on. Also, uh, Derek uh, uh, Peterson at Soder Technologies has gotten together with Wyandanch and is creating electro electrical um, uh, technician training as well. Uh, mm -hmm. So a lot of great things going on. And what we're trying to do at the show is to let other manufacturers and other schools know the great things are going on so we can all share best practices and everybody get better here in the island. 
Yeah. And again, you know, use it as a template. I agree with you, Ron, right? So the more we can do that because some people are doing phenomenal things. Absolutely. So broaden that for us um, as an audience and talk a little bit about some of the other things. What comes to my mind is manufacturing day, right? Mm -hmm. But some of the other things that both of you are doing to help out with this industry. Yes, definitely. So uh, one of the things, for example, just um, I can share is, for example, international markets, for instance. So, um, well, so we are in global market. We compete against global players as well as uh, national players, of course. Uh, and one of the important thing, things that we have to consider is to find new new markets internationally. So uh, we, um, I must say, once in a quarter, uh, we definitely uh, address these actually the challenges that manufacturers uh, have, especially finding um, uh, different uh, international markets in different regions. Uh, for example, uh, previously we talked about how to do business with different countries, for example, which is critical uh, to know about their um, needs and uh, their way of doing business, for example, and understanding how they're approaching the market and how we can actually, as American manufacturers, we can you know, reach those markets, for instance. So uh, in that sense, we'll uh, definitely keep addressing uh, these uh, international markets and international trade aspect of our committee as part of HILI. Also, uh, we always invite experts, for example, uh, in our uh, to our committee meetings, uh, especially U.S. commercial services, for example, from the local branches. We also invite Empire State Development, for example, for them to uh, you know promote available resources, you know, you know, state level as well as federal level. And then uh, you know the manufacturers can learn about and utilize. So there are resources available, and they're very exciting. And we just have to be promoted and then share that information with uh, with manufacturers. So in that sense, I'm also very excited about the international trade aspect of uh, our activities because uh, we always need new markets, and there is always room for improvement, and that's a fact. So in that sense, that's important. Another thing is uh, also to be competitive. We have to make sure there is a um, integrated management system in place. So ISO is critical. ISO 9001 is the most universal management system in the world. And we see there is more interest in the United States nowadays, which is great. We have to do more because these type of systems helps us uh, become more competitive in the marketplace. A, we can regulate, uh, we can adapt uh, regulations easily. B, customers are asking for it. So we can also satisfy this customer requirement in international markets as well, because ISO shows that you have a management system in place, you have a discipline in place, and your activities and your operations are documented and reportable. So these are all exciting you know, information that we keep promoting uh, in our you know, HLI manufacturing and international trade committee. So definitely it's coming, uh, more, more is coming, I must say. Yeah, I mean, in listen, if I, for those of you who watch are watching, I, I, I have to tell you, this committee is just chock full of information, just chock full of information. and. One of the things that we see frequently in Long Island is that, again, it's all about connection, right? There are some really, really good services out there that people aren't aware of. Not anybody's fault. It's just we run at 150 miles an hour. So um, this committee really does a superior job at making that connection. So before I forget, Kevin, when you were talking, I it dawned on me. I mean, at, what change have you seen in international trade, both from the pandemic, but but equally in terms of what's going on in the world. It's such a crazy world right now, right? I mean, has True. that impacted international trade at all? And if so, how? Yes, definitely. So uh, based on my observation and what we learned from manufacturers, um, so what we have challenges at home, also similar challenges also internationally. So there is uh, still a disruption in terms of uh, supply chain, there is still labor shortage going on. That is also a fact. And there is also disruption in labor because of COVID. You know, people get sick, they, you know, they take leave. Uh, right. You know, there is, uh, that, that is actually very overwhelming for many, uh, you know, um, many people, regardless of where you are. And that's a fact. Uh, so that is also a challenge. Um, cybersecurity is also a challenge uh, internationally. That's also what we see. Because, uh, um, you know, hacking going on here and there, not only, you know, in our nation, also internationally, we see that's also a challenge. So what I see is there are similar challenges internationally. There may be some, you know, national challenges or, or local challenges, but in general, the major top five challenges are the same. So they are also struggling in a way to, you know, address these these challenges. So in the United States, and um, you know, having you know educated the labor force, 
having the technology, you know, we have the upper hand, but we need to, you know, make sure we need to, we are implementing it in a way that, you know, we are actually competitive in the international marketplace. So that is critical. And we have to also make sure we need to use the resources available, you know, and on the federal level and state level. And, you know, uh, we always invite officials, uh, you know, Empire State Development or US Commercial Services, they want to help and they are ready for it and they are excited and they are motivated. So we need to work with them. That is critical. So uh, that we can be more competitive in the in international markets as well, uh, moving forward. That's uh, what I have been seeing so far. Yeah, and you know, it's so funny you said that because just this morning, Empire State Development and, and Carol Longworth, who happens to be a very good friend of ours, reached out and said, you know, the Long Island Regional Economic Development Council starts their rounds and they give out an exorbitant amount of money every year in grants on May 1st. And she said, you know, how can we get that word better out to your members? Because what they're finding is, as we said before, and seems to be a theme, right? is making a connection, making a connection, helping people understand the resources that they have. So we will do that, sure. we're committed to do that. Um, Ron, talk to us a little bit about, in general, Manufacturing Day, the benefit to it. We've been involved in it for years, what you're seeing with kids, how excited they're getting, and so on. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the last, uh, what, uh, 2020, 2021, we've had to do it virtually. Um, with some success, but there's nothing like being there in person on the uh, on the, the shop floor, the factory floor. So this year, actually, one of the pieces that we're asking the manufacturers to do at the trade show is to you know get people's contact information, invite them to their to the manufacturer's facility in October during that. Uh, we're going to call it Manufacturing Month because it's hard to hard to do everything in a day. Um, and so this is where the kids really get excited, right? They see the machines in process. They see the, the finished products, you know, for some of the companies that are making products. Uh, they see the automation. They see the robotics. They see the cobots going out there. So, um, you know, because that's, that's going to be the focus, hopefully pandemic allowing, uh, you know, in October, uh, getting back to in person. So, uh, what we're looking at is inviting all manufacturers, which is that's, that's what Manufacturing Day is all about, open their doors, invite in the public, you know, the parents, teachers, students, and show them the great things that they're doing. So that's uh, that's what's coming up in October. Yeah, that'll be exciting. I can't wait to be back in person. I agree with you. Absolutely. <laughs> that is true. So speaking of that, I just wanted to read to everyone who's online some of the types of companies that'll be involved in the show as a result of Ron and Kevin's work. So Contract Pharmacal. Contract Pharmacal has probably now about 1,400 employees and they have 12 locations right here in this Long Island Innovation Park. I took a second tour the other day and I have to tell you, as Mark Wolf was walking us around and he said, you know, we make 6 billion pills a day I thought, oh my heavens, right? Wow. Talk about a wow, right? Yeah. Talk about a wow. And these are things from aspirins to hangover medication, <laughs> to Dramamine to, I mean, really um, things we buy on an everyday basis that might not, the label might not say CPC, right? certainly manufacture them. So that's one of them. Um, some of these companies will be new to me, but we're excited about them. So I don't know how to pronounce this. So Ron, you're going to have to help me. Orlikon or Orlikon, yeah, Orlikon. Orlikon Metco. That's that's the company I mentioned that's uh, coordinating with uh, Nassau Boses to create a uh, a manufacturing machining curriculum so that they you know they get all the basic skills. They're they're uh, part of a uh, a Swiss international conglomerate. Uh, the Westbury division, uh, like I said before, is like 300 employees. They've been one of our customers for years. We've we've uh, uh, helped them with uh, project management training, with lean manufacturing, with uh, process improvement. So great customer of ours. And uh, and Mike Tobin, who is actually a fellow Army vet of mine, uh, is going to be there on the show. He's the president now of uh, the Westbury facility. Oh, good. So, you know... Um Offline, we should talk about, we have several reporters coming and we normally hand them a list of CEOs. So let's make sure with somebody like that, we get him to be interviewed because that's another way again to promote and really uh, from a PR standpoint. Some of the others, Thorough Metal, we talked about East West Industries, great, great company. 
Mm -hmm. Allotel, uh, machine, Axis Automation, Richland, uh, Richland Automation, CPI Arrow, Lily's Foods, I think you talked about. There will be a variety of people on the show floor and many, many more, actually. And, you know, the beauty of that show is that absolutely we will highlight this year manufacturers, but there are a lot of other organizations mm -hmm. that are involved. And some of them are technology driven, some of them are energy driven, some of them are Suffolk IDA is a large partner of ours in terms of um, innovation. So it's a great show. I encourage everyone to be involved. It's May 26th. See how quick that half hour went, gents? Yes, yes. Believable. You were right. Yeah. <laughs> now no, I see it. <laughs> Before we go off the air, just any last thoughts you'd like to leave everybody with? Yeah, I'm, I'm just super excited about uh, getting the manufacturing committee uh, uh, community together, I should say. Um, you know, if in, in my travels, I can't remember the last time we've had a manufacturing show or fair or gathering um, anywhere on Long Island. So excited to get people back together again to, to share best practices, you know, on, on the technology side to see the latest in automation and to share what's going on with the collaboration between the schools. And, you know, the, the big problem again is, is labor, right? So as a manufacturer, as a business, what are you doing to develop that, that pipeline? Take a look at what other people are doing and, and jump on that train. Right, absolutely. And Definitely. you did not hear this from me, although I'm saying it publicly now. I think that in years to come, we could have a separate manufacturing trade show just for manufacturers. I really, really oh, do. I, great, that, that's just, exciting, yes. Yeah, it would just be just to show the marvelous thing. <laughs> for Absolutely. Absolutely. And in that sense, for you. Last yes, definitely. Yes, thank you. Well, thank you so much, first of all, uh, in my business. I appreciate it. It's such an honor, such a privilege. Thank you. So uh, I'm also very excited for the May 26th for the HILA trade show. Uh, looking forward to seeing colleagues, friends, customers, and our fellow HILA uh, you know, uh, community members. I'm definitely looking forward to it. There, is, there are many things that we can learn at the trade show we can share. We can shake hands and make the connections, just like you mentioned. So I'm definitely looking forward to it. As I always say, what is good for Long Island, good for the nation. What is good for the nation, good for the, good for the world. So th thank you. Thank, thank you very much. And thank the both of you. Listen, you know, an organization like the HIALI just absolutely does not happen and push things forward without volunteer leaders like you. So we appreciate everything that you do, everything that you do. Um, again, everyone who's watching, please join us on May 26th. And we do a lot of other things. Get involved in the manufacturing and the International Trade Committee as well. And we hope everybody has a wonderful weekend. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Thank you very Stay much. Well, everybody. Thank you.